Hello, welcome to the webinar on building blocks of healthier meals. My name is Lexi Jean and I'm an accredited practicing dietitian and I will be guiding you through the presentation today. Hopefully by the end of this webinar, you will have a better understanding of how to build healthier meals. I've tried to make this webinar as interactive as possible. So throughout the presentation, there will be some activities for you to participate. So it will be nice to have pen and paper with you before we start. Towards the end of the session, I will ask you to set a go and make a plan. So feel free to jot down some ideas as we move on. Just to give you an overview of what we are going to talk about. First of all, we're going to talk about the carbs, the proteins and the vegetables, which are referred to as go, glow and repair in this presentation. After that, we are going to talk about a little bit more about fat and sodium intake. Okay, let's get started now. When we talk about building healthier meals, what does it mean to you? For some people, it needs to be easy or affordable. And for some others, it means more fibers and feeling comfortable about it. And others may say it needs to be enjoyable. Basically, it can mean different things to different people. And we need to respect those individual differences. So that's why building healthier meals need to be sustainable and flexible. It needs to be easy to implement and easy to add in individual preferences. So that's why understanding the basic building blocks of healthier meals are important. One way to think about planning a healthier meal is to think about what benefits we would like to get from eating it and find the key ingredients for it. So it can be go as we need energy to keep us going and it can be glow to keep our skin glowing and keep our immune system strong by including the foods that are rich in vitamins, minerals, and fibers. And lastly, to repair. Our body uses protein to build and repair tissues. Let's have a look at the go foods to begin with. The go foods are the carb-rich foods. Carbohydrate foods provide the brain and body with essential fuels to enable us to basically to all the activities we are doing. Having carbohydrate rich foods is like putting petrols in your car to make it go. And every single cell in our body needs energy to function properly. So we need to first of all to understand what foods are containing carbohydrates. Have a look at the following images. Which ones contain carbohydrates, do you think? They actually all contain carbohydrates. What did you think? Any foods you were surprised about? Before we have a quick recap on the major carb sources, let's have a look at the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating. Some of you may have seen this before, so basically all the foods we have can be classified into these five core food groups. These core foods are essential for our health. So from the top left corner, the yellow group, we have our grain foods like our breakfast cereals, rice noodle and pastas. And clockwise, we have the dark green food group, that's our vegetables, legumes and beans. And after that, we have fruit, dairy and alternatives. And lastly, our meat, poultry, tofu, nuts and beans group, which are the protein rich group. You may have noticed that for foods like chocolates, ice creams, chips and cakes, they don't fall into any of these five core food groups. That's because those foods are not quite essential for us. They are basically for the enjoyment, right? So just a small amount occasionally will be fine. And this Australian Guide to Healthy Eating applies for all Australians, regardless of if you have diabetes or not. We are familiar with carbohydrates as starchy foods, such as bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, and legumes. However, carbohydrates can be also found in sugars, including the natural sugars, 
um, such as the natural sugars in the fruit and the lactose, natural sugars in dairy products like yogurt um, and other milk. And of course, added sugars in food such as lollies, soft drinks, they are also um, carbohydrates. And as you can see in this Australian Guide to Healthy Eating, images we've grayed out to the food that do not contain carbohydrate and everything left on this diagram are the foods that contain carbohydrates. So how much should we have per meal? Let's say all the foods you have in a meal is in one plate. We normally recommend a quarter of the food coming from the carbohydrates food or the go foods per meal. So we know that all the carbohydrates foods will be broken down into glucose and give us a rise in our blood glucose level. So obviously, if we have too much carbohydrate in one go, um, it will have a bigger impact on your blood glucose levels. So choosing a moderate amount of carbohydrate is essential. On top of the quantity we just talked about, some carbohydrate foods break down into sugars a lot slower and causing a slower rise in your blood glucose level. And we normally refer to those kind of foods as having lower glycemic index. Examples of lower glycemic index or lower GI foods include multigrain bread, basmati rice, quinoa, and most pastas and so on. So while choosing a moderate quantity of the go food or carbohydrate food is important, choosing the lower GI carbohydrate will also make a difference on your blood glucose management. So if you want to have more information about glycemic index of carb, you can have a look at the fact sheets from NDSS website and I'll share the link towards the end of this webinar. So we talked about we need to include a quarter of our go food. Let's look at what's next. We would also like to include a quarter of your plate from the repair foods. And the repair and maintenance foods are the protein rich ones. And they are a very important component of every cell in our body. And we get those protein rich food from our meat, poultries, fish, eggs, tofu, and beans. Even if you are not a big meat eater, you can definitely choose those non-meat sources of protein, such as the beans and tofus. And for the remaining half of the plate, we would like to include more glow foods. So they are our non-starchy vegetables, such as our capsicums, broccoli, cauliflowers, cabbages, carrots. These foods are very rich in fiber, vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and they are really, really important for our gut health and our immune health. But unfortunately, only 5% of Australian adults are reported to be eating the recommended 5 serves of vegetables per day. We mentioned earlier that vegetables are really rich in fiber. So why do you think fibers are important for our body? Look at the slides. So here is another activity. What do you believe are the benefits of having fiber? A, keeps you regular. B, slows digestion. C, keeps you full for longer. D, help managing blood glucose levels and cholesterol levels. E, food sources of healthy gut bacteria. F, all of the above. The correct answer is F, all of the above. Keeps you regular, it's very obvious. We know that if we um, have more fibers and vegetables, it can keep us regular for the bathrooms. And fiber is actually the, the, the part of the food that we can't really digest. So if we have extra fibers, it will slow down the digestion. That's why it will keep us to feel full for longer. And because of the same reason, it will also help us to manage our blood glucose levels. Some of you may have heard about gut bacteria or probiotics. And actually fiber is the food for those um, healthy gut bacteria. 
So that's why we need to have a good amount of fiber in our diet so that we can keep our healthy bacteria alive and support our immune system better. So we're putting it all together. We have a quarter of the plate coming from the Go foods, ideally the low GI carbohydrate foods, and a quarter of the plate coming from your repair protein foods, and remaining half of the plate coming from the glow non-starchy vegetables. And I understand that everyone is very different. That's why your own hand can be very useful to provide you with a guide to estimate the portion sizes that are suitable for you. Choose a fist size of any low GI go food and a palm size of repair food or hand size if it's fish and choose two handfuls of the glow foods. And these portions can be more flexible. It can depend on your hunger. And for people who are aiming to work on small steps of improvement, or for people who are very active and you may need more carbohydrates or more repair proteins, and for people who want to gain weight, you definitely would love to include more carbohydrates and proteins for extra energy. You can always have your own variations, depends on your current lifestyle or your health goals. However, it is encouraged to have at least a third of the plate coming from the glow foods. Let's have a look at our fat intake. Fats provide energy and keep us warm. It helps us absorb fat-soluble nutrients like vitamin A, D and K and produce important hormones. However, not all fats are created equal. There are two different types of fat from our diet. The first one is the saturated fat. And this is the one we normally refer to as the bad fat because they will increase our LDL or the bad cholesterol levels in our blood. Usually the saturated fats are from the animal source, except the coconut oils and palm oils. So these will include the fatty portions from the meat, chicken skin, butter, processed meat like ham, bacon, salami or sausages, pastries because they use a lot of butter to make it, and highly processed foods such as biscuits and chips. And these are the types of fat we would love to minimize. On the other hand, we have our unsaturated fats and they are the healthier fats and they actually help us to protect our blood vessels and our heart. Unsaturated fats are usually from the plant sources, such as olive oil, canola oil, nuts and seeds, avocados, and 100% natural nut butters. To minimize the saturated fat intake, it is important to trim the fats off around the meat and remove the chicken skin and cook in healthier oils when we have the palm-sized repair food. We talked about saturated fats are the harmful fats because they will increase the LDL levels. So LDL cholesterol is type of cholesterol that's found in our blood vessel and they are the ones that can lead to the plaque buildup and causing the narrowing of the blood vessels and that will in turn increase your risk of stroke and heart-related disease. Plus, the saturated fats in our diet can also lead to insulin resistance. That means it will make our body more resistant to the insulin that's produced from pancreas and that will increase your risk of getting diabetes or making your diabetes harder to control. Okay, time for another activity. Here I have 20 grams of butter and 20 grams of olive oil. So as you can see, butter is the saturated fat and olive oil is the unsaturated healthier fat. So comparing these two different types of fat, which one do you think has more energy? The answer is they are the same. Fats are very dense in energy. For example, per gram of fat has more than twice as much as energy compared to the same amount of carbohydrate or protein. Regardless of the type of the fat, a fat is a fat uh, from the energy perspective. They all have the same amount of energy per gram. 
That means too much of healthier fats will still contribute to weight gain. So how much fat we should be having? So for each meal, we recommend to have approximately two teaspoons of healthier oils, a quarter of avocado, or a tablespoon of 100% nut butter. Let's move on to the sodium. Salt or sodium is present naturally in a lot of foods. It's a natural flavor enhancer and preservative. So it's often added to food products and during cooking. However, if we consume too much salt, there might be some health concerns. What is the health risk of overconsumption of sodium? It increases our blood pressure and the risk of high blood pressure. And for people living with diabetes, if the blood pressure is not well managed, it will also increase your risk of diabetes related complications because they all go hand in hand. So to understand the sodium content of our common foods, let's do another quick activity. Have a look at these foods and think about if all of these foods contain sodium in it. If so, try to rank the foods according to the sodium content from the lowest amount to the highest amount. Here is the correct answer. How did you go? Were you surprised about any of these? So for things like lean meat, because they are not processed, because they are 100% natural, it's very low in sodium content. So does other vegetables and fruit. However, for things like ham, croissant, cheeses, and instant soup, because they are highly processed, that's why their sodium content is a lot higher too. So towards the highest end, we have one teaspoon of salt which contains 2,000 milligrams of sodium. Have you ever thought about what is the recommended sodium intake per day? Actually, this one teaspoon of sodium, which contains five grams of salt or 2,000 milligrams of sodium, is what we recommend in Australia. However, most Australians are having twice as much. Let's say if someone is having a ham cheese croissant for their breakfast, how much sodium will it add up to? It will be approximately 1100 milligrams of sodium, which is already more than half of what we need per day. Heart Foundation mentioned that 75% of our sodium or salt comes from processed foods, including the cooking sources. Remember the non core foods we talked about when we were talking about Australian guys to healthy eating? And they are the main processed food sources. To reduce our sodium intake, we may need to reduce our extra food intake and try to switch from salt to spices to flavor your foods. Okay, let's try to put everything we talked about so far into a step-by-step -step checklist. So first of all, before you cook or before you eat, think about how hungry you are. That definitely relates to how flexible you can go with the portions. So if, you've been, if you had a really busy day or you had a really active day, you are feeling a lot more hungry, definitely you can have more food. However, if you haven't done much or you just had a snack or a light meal a few hours ago and you are not feeling as hungry, maybe you wouldn't need to eat as much. Check in with your hunger levels first and choose the right portions accordingly. And next, make sure you have all the three basic building blocks in your meal. So that's your go, repair and glow. And think about what food items you want to eat from each component. Ideally, choose the food items within the five core food groups from Australian Guides to Healthy Eating. And for the go foods, choose whole grain foods over more processed grains because they are more likely to be lower in glycemic index and that's better for our diabetes or blood glucose management. Next, 
choose the right portion sizes. If the portion size is what you want to improve, make small changes over the time, and you don't need to be perfect in one go. Just to make sure that your plate has at least a third of it filled with vegetables,、um, and prepare your dish with a small amount of healthier fats, such as olive oil, avocado, canola oil, and so on, and see if you have swapped all the potential saturated fat with the healthier unsaturated fat. And lastly, check if you have swapped salt for spices where possible to flavor your meal. And this will help you to reduce your sodium intake. And sometimes tips like changing to a smaller plate or having a plate that has already portioned out into different components, just like the one I'm showing on the slide, can be also a good idea. So so far, we have talked a lot of information about basic building blocks of healthier meals. And it will be very nice to focus on one go to start with. So write down what you'd like to work on on the piece of paper. So I will guide you through this go setting step by step. So first of all, write down what are you going to do exactly. For example, for some people, maybe they are doing really well for the carbohydrate, the go component, and the repair component. However, they are not eating enough vegetables, the glow component. So your goal will be increasing the vegetable intake with the meals. And when are you going to start? And when are you going to do it? Are you going to increase your vegetable intake for all the meals you are having in a day, or just one meal? Is it just dinner or just lunch? If that's the case, and when are you going to start? Is this tonight? Or Friday, or next Monday, and how often are you going to do it? Is it every day, or two or three days in a week as a start, and gradually increase it? It's totally up to you. Whichever is more achievable and realistic for you is the better plan for you. And if you were going to do it, what are the key barriers that may stop you from achieving your goal? Will it be lack of ingredients in your pantry or in your fridge? Will it be forgetfulness? So, for whatever barriers you may have, think about what can be solutions for those barriers. So, I would love you to think about those solutions now, and in that way, it will increase your likelihood to succeed in achieving your goals. And what support will you need? Sometimes our own willpower is very limited, so that's why we need support from others. Who can support you? Will it be your family members or your close friends or your neighbors? And what kind of support do you need? And lastly, when are you going to review your goal and plan to see if you've achieved it? Try to write a date down now and come back to it by then. So if you've achieved it. What can be a reward you'd like to give yourself? And if you achieved it, then you can definitely step up or move on to the next goal or next plan. Today's session is more about general basic information, and you may want to have one-to-one -one consultations with your dietitian. So, if you want to see an accredited dietitian, please talk to your GP about a chronic disease management plan. And a referral to see a dietitian if applicable. If you want to find a dietitian in your area, you can also go to Dietitians Australia website for more information. If you want to get some extra cookbooks and resources, please check the Diabetes Shop. There is also a physical healthy eating meal plate available.、Um, so if you are interested, please check the link below. And if you want to find out some more information about diabetes prevention and management, you can also check the NDSS website for extra fact sheets. Here you can also find a glycemic index fact sheet, the one I talked about earlier. And just as a reminder, if you have diabetes and still don't have this blue NDSS card, maybe this is something you can talk to your GP about next time. 
the NDSS offers a huge range of support and education for people living with diabetes, um, such as information sessions, webinars like this one, as well as a huge range of face-to-face -face education programs, such as Carb Smart, where you can find a lot more information about carbohydrate, and Shop Smart, where we talk about label reading skills. Through the NDSS or your local diabetes organization, you can find out more information and the dates and venues of upcoming programs. So if you are interested, please call the NDSS helpline or check out your local diabetes organization's website. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any further questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact us on our NDSS helpline. That's it for me for now. I wish you all the best. Stay well and take care. Bye for now.